Welcome to Handmade with Holly. My name is Holly Michelson, and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Tonight, I'm filming my very first YouTube tutorial, and our topic is how to assemble cling mount stamps. When you receive your cling mount stamps from Stampin' Up!, they come as the red rubber stamp plus a sticker sheet, and I'm going to show you how to apply those stickers to your stamps. We're going to take a walkthrough of two different methods of how you can do that, and at the end of the video, you'll be able to pick and decide which method you think is best for you. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and rotate my camera down to my desk. And I think that's pretty good. I, hopefully everybody can see there. I have two stamp sets with me this evening. The first one is called Back on Your Feet. This is really an adorable stamp set. Allows you to make great get well cards um, and you know nice encouraging cards. And I also have Celebrate Sunflowers, a little glare on that, but I have the Celebrate Sunflowers stamp set, which makes um, some beautiful cards. Uh, congratulations, let's celebrate you, thanks a bunch, know that you are loved. Now, the reason why I brought both stamp sets tonight was I wanted to show you what stamps look like when they first arrive, and then we're, we're going to actively use the other one to assemble. So this Celebrate Sunflowers stamp set is brand new. I haven't used it yet. And you can see that it comes with a sheet of red rubber foam. If I hold it on the side here, you can see that foam that gives the stamp nice cushion. These stamps are pre-cut from the excess backing, but they're still slightly attached. You, you need to pop them out in a few places, uh, but they're ready to go. And then we also have a sticker sheet. This sticker sheet is uh, has two benefits. The first of which is it allows you to add a sticker to your stamp so that you clearly know that it's the turtle stamp or the size stamp. Um, the sticker helps you identify which stamp it is you're working with. And it also helps you tell the top of the stamp versus the bottom of the stamp so that you know which way to hold it. The second purpose for the sticker is that it provides the adhesive that allows you to attach your stamp to a clear block. And so um, these new cling mount stamps are super sticky. I, I just love them. And I'm gonna show you now how to actually mount these stickers to your stamps. So we're gonna work with the back on your feet set. You can see I've already started mounting the stickers on this set. So we'll keep working on it together. How about we do this stamp right here? This one doesn't have a sticker yet. And this says, this is not good, um, which is so cute, right? It goes with the giraffe who has a knot in its neck. This is not good. Now we're gonna flip the sticker sheet over to the side that's more opaque. This transparent side allows us to see the image, but we wanna be on the opaque side so that we can pull off the protective backing. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a slit right there in the protective backing and that allows us to get our finger underneath it and to peel off that paper. We also need to remove the protective backing from the stamp and that exposes the foam. This is not tacky. My finger isn't sticking to that at all, but this sticker is very tacky. On this side, we actually have permanent adhesive. This permanent adhesive is what attaches the sticker permanently to the stamp. I've said that a few times and I've done so deliberately because I wanna make the point that you only have one shot to get your stamp onto your sticker. If you put it on a little crooked, then it's gonna be that way for good. If you try to peel the sticker back off the stamp, you run the risk of tearing the foam. And if you tear up any of the foam, then the stamp won't be level or even, and you may not get as good an impression from the stamp. So at this point in the step, I always pause and take a little care to line things up correctly because again, I have one shot at it. So when we remove the backing here from the sticker sheet, it created a template 
that, or a stencil that we can use to determine where we should place our stamp. So I'm going to just go ahead and hover the stamp over that opening in the sticker sheet. And when I have it in the right spot, I'm going to lower it down onto the sticker sheet. Give it a little press and then use your thumb to peel it up. And now my sticker is attached to the back of my stamp. Now that I've done that, I can easily put my stamp right on a black and you can see I can shake it and my stamp won't fall off. This back side of the sticker has repositionable adhesive. So every time I put that stamp on the block, it's going to stick and stay, peel it off, put it back on again, and it's just as tacky as it was before. So this side has that repositionable adhesive. And we did a pretty good job getting that sticker on there. I, th I think it's just ever so slightly off, but I think I did a pretty good job on that one. Now, the way that I just showed you to mount your stamps is the way that Stampin' Up! recommends. And in fact, if you look inside your stamp case, they even provide you with directions on how to do what we just did. So that is the Stampin' Up! recommendation. But like anything, there are always clever people that come up with new and better ways to do things. And it's no different for the mounting of stamps. Some clever person came up with an alternate way, and I'm going to show you that as well. So in this second method for mounting your stamps, we're going to take the entire sticker, not just the backing, but the entire sticker off the sticker sheet, and we're going to position it on our block. Just go ahead and use your fingers to mount it on there. Now remember that side of the sticker is the repositionable side. So I can lift it and put it back down. If, if for some reason I had an air bubble or anything I needed to correct, I can lift it and put it back down because it's repositionable. We're going to expose the permanent adhesive by kind of just poking your fingernail underneath that protective backing. Um, if you have a pair of tweezers, you could also use tweezers to get under there. You might even be able to use your take your pick tool. Now that I've removed the paper, we've revealed a clear sticker, which is stuck to my black. And we're gonna come back into the case and we're gonna find this stamp. This stamp is just adorable with the bandaged up leg. There's a really cute phrase that goes with this. Hope you're back on your feet soon. And now that we have our stamp and our, we're going to take the protective backing off that. And we're just going to put it stamp side down onto our grid paper. Now flip over your black so that your sticker is facing in the same direction as your stamp. And do you see how now, because we have a clear sticker and a clear black, we can see right through that to the stamp and we can use uh, our, you know, uh, great visual cues to, to really position the sticker right over the stamp. And when we have it centered where it looks like we've got it well aligned, we can go ahead and lower the block down onto the stamp. And we've now successfully applied our stamp. Not only that, but we've mounted our stamp and we're ready to go. If we were working on a project, we'd be ready to go right now. Um, if I go ahead and use my thumb, I can gently remove the stamp. And you can see how perfectly I was able to place that sticker on this clear stamp. In fact, if we go back and look at the first one, you can see I was slightly off. It's just a little bit too long on the edge and a little bit short at the top. So for that reason, I really prefer this second method of mounting my stamps where I pull the, st the entire sticker and protective backing off the sheet, mount it to my block, and then use the, the block to center the sticker and adhere it to my stamp. But either way, both of these techniques will work and it's up to you to decide which one you prefer. I'd love to hear your thoughts on whether you like the first technique or the second technique better. Please leave me a comment down below and let me know which methods you prefer. Now, I've shown you how to remove the stamps 
from the blocks just by using your thumb. But I do want to mention also proper cleaning of your cling mount stamps. You have two options for cleaning your stamps. You can use your stamp and chamois. And with stamp and chamois, you would spritz a little stamp and mist on the left side and scrub your stamp, give it a good scrub, and then dry it off on the right hand side. Or if you have one of the newer Stampin' chamois, you can simply rub your stamp across the chamois and clean it using simply water. So um, this is a slightly more economical method. You don't need to continue replen replenishing your stamping mist. Either one of those two methods will work and is perfectly safe for cling mount stamps. What we don't recommend is the use of stays on cleaner. If you use stays on cleaner on your cling mount stamps, it can, and you get it on the adhesive side of your stamp, you can damage the adhesive and um, make your stamps less tacky. So uh, avoid the stays on cleaner with these stamps. And lastly, I would just say that when you're finished with your project, you wanna remove your stamps and put them back into your stamp case promptly. Cling mount stamps are very tacky. You don't wanna leave them on your blocks for an extended period of time. It's not recommended to leave your stamps overnight or for a week sitting on your craft table. If you do that, the stamps may be very firmly adhered to your blocks and you'll have to work a little bit harder to remove your stamps from the blocks. So you wanna get in the habit of promptly removing them from the blocks and putting them back in your case. If you're like me, I prefer to leave the extra red rubber right in my case. It gives me a great indicator when I'm missing a stamp. If this stamp were still adhered to the block, this is the size stamp, so cute. If this were still adhered to the block and I went to put my stamps away, it would be readily obvious to me that I was missing a stamp and that I needed to scan my craft table and locate that before I put my stamps away. The other reason why I like this extra backing in the case is that it creates a small gap between the stamp and the back of the case, which then makes it easier for you to remove your cling mount stamps from the case each time you want to use them. If they're applied just directly to the back of the case, you may have to get your fingernail underneath there to pull them out of the case in the future. So there you have it. Two separate methods for how you can mount your cling mount stamps. Again, I would love it if you would leave me a comment down below letting me know whether you prefer method number one of sticking the stamp onto the sticker sheet or method number two of putting the sticker on a clear block and using that to visually align the sticker onto the back of the stamp. If you found this video helpful, I would really appreciate it if you would give me a thumbs up. I'm new to YouTube and really would like to build my following. Having thumbs up will help me get more visibility and exposure. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you can see future videos. And if you click on the bell, then you'll be notified each time I upload a new video. Thanks so much for joining me for my very first video and happy stamping.